Hey everyone, it's Misty. Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new, welcome. Today I am going to be doing a very chatty, get ready with me. So if you don't like chatty videos, I get it. Not everybody does, I do, but um, I'll see you in the next video if that's not your thing. But yeah, I thought I would get ready. I actually just got a phone call from our um, groomer that they can fit my dog in today. So, you know, I waited until the last minute, the week of Christmas to call and try to get him a, an appointment. And of course they were like booked for like a week and a half. So she's like, I'll put you on the list, but there's a lot of people on the list. So I got a phone call and she said he could come in at 345. So I thought I'll go get ready um, and then I can go finish up some Christmas shopping while I'm out taking him. And so yeah, I'm getting ready. I've actually been up since pretty early this morning because I had a dermatologist appointment. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. But first, I've already done my brows. And I already put a little bit of my sunscreen and moisturizer on, but this is a new product for me. This is the uh, Studio Fix Conceal and Correct Palette. So I thought this was neat. Um, I, there we go. I um, needed a new concealer. So I saw this and I went into MAC when we were down um, at our town center the other day. And she's like, this will be perfect because you can mix, you know, like if you get a little bit more tan or if you're a little bit paler and, and there's also like the, um, the color, the, the uh, corrector color, which is very similar to my Becca, the Becca shade, um, very similar. So I think that's pretty cool. Maybe a little bit darker, but yeah, so far I really like it. Um, it is very creamy. So she said, you know, you're going to need to set it um, with powder, but that's fine. Because I said, you know, I like to set it with powder anyways. So, but I'm still trying to figure out like, how do I like apply it the best? But yeah, I had a dermatologist appointment this morning. Um, I go every six months to the dermatologist, um, being that I am on... Um, chemo like I take a chemo pill every day so that um, really messes with your immune system and they like you to come in every six months just because you know you're more apt to get like skin cancer basal cancer and I have had a spot before you know I live in a very tropical area we're in the sun a lot it just it is what it is so I do go every six months to keep that appointment. I go every six months. So, um, everything went right today. The only thing I was a little, I was a little stressed. I was a little stressed because, um, I, this bump kind of came up on my foot Now I'm going in with my, um, Estee Lauder Futurist, what I always use doing way more of the light color now because it's the winter but just a little bit of the dark, just because I'm still not that pale. Um, but yeah, this weird bump kind of came up on my foot, like out of the blue. So it really kind of made me nervous and it was like really fast growing. Um, and come to find out it's a wart. And uh, either that or she said, maybe like at first she said she thought it was like um, one of those keratosis, which is like very pre, cancer kind of thing but then she looks at it with her little magnifying glass and she's like yeah this is a wart so we're gonna burn it off and that's what she did but um you know it's never fun to worry and to, you know that appointment is just never fun because you know you're practically naked and someone's looking over your entire body because I do a skin check every six months. Um, and I would definitely recommend, no matter who you are, no matter what, um, you know, ethnicity you are, no matter what skin color you are, um, from super pale to super dark, um, anybody can get skin cancer. So I think, you know, especially the older we get, 
that's an important appointment. Um, if you, especially if you live somewhere where you're in the sun a lot. So I think anybody can benefit from going to the dermatologist. Plus if you have any skin issues, they can help you with that. Um, yeah, so that appointment went very well. She checked me all over and thankfully I don't have, didn't have any skin issues. The last time I went six months ago, they, she took a mole off my back and she thought it was suspicious, but it turns out it wasn't bad. So that was good, but it was just good, you know, that she got it off because she was concerned about it. And then last week I actually had to go in to the, um, to back to, uh, where I get my mammograms done and I had to have a level two mammogram because, uh, well, level two, like a more intense mammogram on a spot and then they do like an ultrasound. And the reason for that is my new doctor, like I'm at a new practice now because my doctor that delivered all of my children is like almost 80 and he just retired. So I had to find a new doctor, but I stayed within the network that I, you know, he was in. So they have all my information, but now you can go and you can have your pap smear and you can have your mammogram done all in one day. And I've been getting regular mammograms since I turned 40. I had a baseline done at 35 and then I had regular ones starting at 40. So, this is a new doctor, so she doesn't know my history. She's never done any kind of exam on me. And she felt a lump, like, over here. And I told her, you know, yeah, that spot particularly, um, that's a spot, like, I've asked my old doctor about. And he basically says there's, like, a thing like fibroids or, like, if you drink a lot of ca uh, caffeine, you can get, like, I don't know, fibroids or something, and he was never concerned. Plus, you know, I always get a, I always get like the level two mammogram, which is um, a little bit more, um, it's a little better than just a regular mammogram. And it keeps you from getting like unnecessarily called back for something because they can really see like veins and they can see. Um, they can just see things that might look suspicious on a regular mammogram and then they can know what it is. So you don't get a call back for something that's nothing. Um, and so she, when she was leaving my appointment, I said, are you concerned about that spot? And she said, no, because you're, you're getting, I kind of felt one on the other side and you're getting a mammogram. So you're good. You're, you'll be fine or something like that. We'll just see what the mammogram shows. So like three weeks passed and I haven't heard from the doctor about my mammogram. Um, all right, I'm going in with a Char Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. Um, I haven't heard about my mammogram, but they told me that <clears throat> getting your um, note out saying that everything was fine, like they send you a paper. She said that was taking, you know, a long time, like up to three weeks because they were kind of behind. So don't freak out, you know, if you haven't heard from us. And usually if there is an issue, you will hear within a, a week, right? So I wasn't too worried about it, um, but I haven't gotten my note I, at that point. And then on a Friday afternoon, I see a voicemail and it is from the Women's Center, and they're calling me to schedule a diagnostic ultrasound. And I knew exactly what that is. And I, my heart dropped because I hadn't heard about my mammogram. And I literally, I just was like about to lose my mind. So I called the doctor and the lady's like, yeah, she wants you to come in um, around December the 14th. And by, at this time, this was like a good month before that. And I said, you want me to wait that long to come in if there's something wrong with my mammogram? And she's like, well, hold on a second. So she looks and she's like, oh no, nothing's wrong with your mammogram. <clears throat> your mammogram turned out great. Like it was signed off by the radiologist. There's nothing wrong um, with your mammogram. But 
your doctor had uh, put an order in for you to come in and have that lump that she felt checked out. So I was like, okay. Well, I felt better that my mammogram was good, but I was kind of like taken aback, you know? Like she never mentioned she was gonna send me in to have that done. I kind of wish she had because obviously if you can imagine, I was kind of stressed out about that, you know, and them just calling me. So shortly, shortly after that conversation, within a few days, I did get my letter <clears throat> from the mammogram saying that everything was good, but I still had to go in. So I did schedule that appointment and she kind of, I did talk to the doctor and she said, I didn't have to come in. She said, you know, honestly, I can, you know, check you again in a couple months um, and if I think you still need it done, or you can just come in and have it done and be done with it. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll just go have it done because <clears throat> who wants that hanging over your head, right? If you think there could be a problem, definitely not me. So I kept the appointment and I went and they had me in there. They did a very, very intense, um, another little mammogram picture on that one spot. And then they did an ultrasound picture. And she went out, got the doctor within five minutes. He's like, nope, you're good to go. There's no issues. There's no um, place, you know, that's totally normal, whatever. We'll just see you next year at your regular mammogram. So <clears throat> I was so, I was so thankful and happy about that, <clears throat> but if you can imagine, I, I was a little stressed out. Like that kind of freaked me out. And I think it would freak anybody out. You know, she's calling me and nobody's even told me that my mammogram's okay. And the doctor never even told me she was going to request me to come back. So if she had said that as she was leaving the office, like, Hey, I know you're getting your mammogram. That's fine. But you know, I think I am going to just go ahead and, and uh, put a request in for you to come back and we'll just look at that spot. I would have been fine with it, but the way it all went down, I'm like, you can't do that to me, okay? You can't, you know, I already have like white coat syndrome where, you know, obviously everything that I've been through, doctor's offices aren't necessarily my favorite place. So that just took it to another level and just kind of stressed me out. So anyways, that's all good. I had that done last week and then of course, this morning I had my dermatologist appointment, so that's all good. So now I can really feel like I can breathe because those appointments have kind of been hanging over my head. And I mean, you know, it's one of those things, like I don't live in fear. I, I give it to God, um, but I'm human and you just worry about things and you don't wanna be thinking about that at Christmas, you know? So, or worried about those kind of things. And I know a lot of people are, so, <clears throat> but um, yeah. So there was that. Um, and now I'm just gonna go in and do a little bit of eyeshadow. Nothing major, just my regular, like, I put like a good medium color. I'll either do browns or corals or pinks, kind of mix it up. So I'm pretty much um, done Christmas shopping for the most part. <clears throat> and this Christmas has been kind of weird because I've already gotten my dad's Christmas party out of the way and my mom's big family Christmas party out of the way. So for the first time, I'm not gonna have like anything going on on Christmas Eve. Um, I made a decision not to um, sing this year in our church choir. Um, I, I feel kind of bad about that to a degree, but I also did not know, you know, what was going to be going on this year as far as family. Cause like family plans just can get made at the last minute. <clears throat> um, but it's okay. It turns out it's good because my husband's actually off on Christmas Eve for the first time. And I can't even tell you the last time he's had Christmas Eve off. So that will be good that we'll just have family time together because we never do on Christmas Eve until like really late. So I, 
I made a good decision, even though I felt bad, um, you know, because I do like to sing in the choir every year. Um, but, you know, I did last year. I sang in the big Easter choir. So sometimes you just have to, you know, I had to make a decision this year just to step back just for this one. I'm sure next year I'll be back at it. Um, and I felt really bad, but like I said, it turned I just had this feeling that there was a reason and I was right. So I, you know, I did the best thing for my family. Um, so yeah, I'll get to spend Christmas Eve with my husband, which is awesome, like the whole day. And we are going to be um, having our best friends over for like a Christmas Eve breakfast and hanging out. Um, so that's exciting. And um, so my husband's actually off on Thursday, Christmas Eve Eve, and then of course Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, because that's just how his schedule fell this time. So I'm so glad for him because honestly, like the schedule he's on, he's kind of gotten, you know, I feel like in some ways, like his schedule is, hasn't been the best one. Um, and so, now I'm glad like it's actually worked out for him to have this schedule because he's going to be able to spend Christmas Eve with us. So uh, on Thursday, Christmas Eve Eve, uh, him and my best friend's husband are taking all of our kids to see Spider-Man. My almost 13 year old son, my youngest, he is about to explode with excitement to go and see Spider-Man. He loved, he was like such a superhero kid. You know, like some kids are into trucks and cars and um, my oldest that's 20, he was into military and camo and um, stuff like that and my littlest well he's not little anymore but my youngest has always been into like superheroes marvel dc um his whole life so this is going to be super fun for them for him so the whole gang's going i'm gonna be home alone to be able to wrap and relax i love being home alone my best friend will probably come over and hang out um, and join me unless she's got stuff to do at her house. They actually live across the street. It's kind of interesting because um, we met each other when we both built our very first houses. And that's the house that I just moved out of. Um, but she had a baby, I had a baby, and then we ended up having our girls together. Um, in 2000 and well, Brooke was born in 2005 and her daughter was in 2006. So they were super close. Um, and then they moved away for a few years. And then when we moved over where we live now, they moved, sold their house because the market's crazy and they did very well. And so they're actually right across the street, but that was just a rental. They wanted to find something permanent. So now they're literally going to be in the neighborhood right behind us. So we're, we're going to be like a minute away from each other. Like it would take me about five minutes to walk there, but like 30 seconds to get there in the car. So I am so thankful to have her back close to me because she's my bestie. Like we've, like I said, we've been best friends for 20 years. So just having her as a neighbor again is the best. So I'm so excited but she's not going either so she will probably come hang out with me unless like i said she has things to do but that'll be fun kind of have a little girls night and um watch something and maybe wrap some presents so we'll see but um i'm almost done at christmas shopping um i have a few more things since our christmas parties my big christmas parties are over i got most everything but I still have my husband's family to finish up. Um, and that's pretty much it. Nothing, nothing too big. Nothing that's like stressing me out too bad. Um, my little, my little ones, my daughter and my son. So 
He's almost 13, she's 16. They're pretty much finished. I think I've gotten everything that they're gonna get. Um, yeah, and as they get older, it just kind of gets harder because, you know, they want, you know, electronics and just, it's just like they always want things that are um, not little toys. They want big things. And then, you know, you want to have stuff for them to open. But, you know, if you're getting them like one big electronic thing, then I don't know. It's just different when they're older. So, and I try not to go like too crazy. I mean, I love buying presents for my kids and trust me, they, they're getting plenty. Like they're getting more than enough. But, um, I do try not to, we don't go too crazy, you know, like, Like, I don't spend, like, thousands each on each kid. That's just not feasible, but I have spent quite a bit, so. And my oldest, you know, he has been working for the last year. He is very independent now, and he buys everything he wants himself. So, I have no idea what to get him. I think my husband's gotten him some things, but... Probably just gonna give him some money. I don't know. This is Mac Teddy, by the way. I just got a new one when I went to Mac the other day. Um, yeah, so, and I think my husband and I, well, we just got our new phones. That's kind of like our Christmas gift to each other. And I think we're gonna buy a couple things for the house. So we're not gonna be, we never really do like, crazy exchanges. I mean, he'll get me, like, we'll get each other, like, cologne or perfume. Um, and, like, sometimes he'll get me, like, a new charm for my Pandora or little, little things like that, but, um, get each other socks and underwear and stuff like that, but, I mean, when you're an adult, you just, you know, if you need something, you buy it. If you want something, you buy it. So, Christmas can be kind of, you know, tricky to buy for people. I'm sure everybody goes through that. Yep. So I am very much almost ready for Christmas. I, um, just have a few more things to buy and then it will be Christmas time. So I, I'm loving it. I love my kids being home and um, just spending time together, watching movies, decorating, you know. I need to go get some like treats and stuff, um, some cookies to make um, and some like, have you guys ever made that stuff called like puppy chow or muddy buddies? It's like with the Chex Mix and the powdered sugar and the peanut butter and the chocolate. That stuff is so good. I've been making that for my kids since they were little. So. Oh, and I took my new purse out today for the first time. I, like I said, I had that appointment with my dermatologist. So I packed it up and took it out and I really like it. I really like it. Um, it's definitely smaller, obviously, than my Speedy 30, so it's, like, packed, you know, when I put my pochette in there and my other pouch and my, um, coin purse, and my wallet, it's pretty packed, but, like, everything's right there and I can just easily unzip stuff and it's really not a big deal, but... little lip gloss on today. Nothing big. All right, guys, I think I'm pretty much done. I'm not going crazy trying to be too dramatic. Um, but yeah, that's it. I feel like I definitely need to self tan. I'm 
looking kind of pale. Um, I'm actually going to be filming next my top 10 Bath and Body Works fragrances for the year. So I thought that would be pretty fun because um, the semi-annual sale is coming up on the 26th. So I have one scent in particular that I'm hoping will be there that I am going to buy, I'm gonna stock up on. Um, but I, you know, this past year's the year that I've gotten into Bath and Body Works big time. So I am going to do a little list. I don't need a lot of stuff, but um, I'm definitely going to, there's a couple of scents that I really want some backups on because I really love it. So I figured it'd be fun to do that, my top 10 list, and um, yeah. and maybe I might do like a little really quick Christmas tour, um, the day of Christmas or maybe Christmas Eve, um, just show you guys like my trees and stuff. So be on the lookout for that. If I have a moment, I will try to film that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for letting me just chat and get some things off my chest and just talk about some things. Um, you know, it, it always feels good just to verbalize some of your stress and the things that you've been going through um, could help somebody else as well. So I hope I am helpful um, helping someone and I really appreciate you watching. And if you guys, like I said, have any video ideas, then let me know below and I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye.